So to start this question off, we've gone ahead and have drawn a picture of the iceberg that's kind of floating in the water and it's partially submerged. And we've labeled two sections of the iceberg. We have the section of the iceberg that is visible above the surface of the fluid. We've labeled that V sub V, which is going to be our visible volume of the iceberg. And then beneath the surface, we have V sub S, which is the submerged volume. That's the portion of the iceberg that we cannot see. And we have again labeled that V sub S. V sub I is going to be the total volume of this iceberg. So it's important to notice that the V sub I, the total iceberg volume, is going to equal the visible volume of the iceberg, V sub V, plus the submerged volume, which would be V sub S. And this is a little equation that we're gonna to return to later on in solving this problem. Now, this iceberg is floating, so it is in equilibrium. And what this means, of course, is that the net force acting on the iceberg is zero. What you wanna do is think about the forces that are acting on the iceberg. Now, of course, we have the downward acting gravitational force. We're gonna go ahead and just label that F sub G. And then in order for this iceberg to be in equilibrium, there has to be at least one other force pointing in the opposite direction. And indeed there is, this is the buoyant force and we're going to label that F sub B. And it's important to understand that the magnitude of the buoyant force is equal to the magnitude of the gravitational force because the iceberg is in equilibrium. So what we can do is say that the magnitude of the buoyant force, F sub B, is equal to the magnitude of the gravitational force, F sub G. Now, for the buoyant force, we need an expression for it. And perhaps we recall from the studies of this chapter that we can translate the buoyancy force or the buoyant force into the following fact. We're going to have the mass of the displaced fluid multiplied by gravity. On the other side of the equation, the gravitational force, of course, is the mass of the entire iceberg multiplied by gravity. Now, what's very important here is to understand how to come up with a strategic expression for these two masses that involves density. Now, we all know that the density of a fluid or a solid is equal to its mass divided by its volume. So what we're gonna do is replace those masses with a different expression. And to see where that expression comes from, we can multiply both sides of this by V. Now the volumes would cancel out over here, and we can see that the mass of an object is equal to its density multiplied by its volume. So that's the expression that we're going to be strategically using here. So for example, the mass of the displaced fluid would equal the density of the fluid multiplied by the volume of the displaced fluid. Now, very important, if you go back and look at the picture, the volume of the displaced fluid would be the volume of the submerged portion of the iceberg. So in this case, we're going to use that symbol V sub S. Again, this is the volume of the submerged portion of the iceberg. That's how much volume of fluid was displaced by the submerged part of that iceberg. So there is our strategic expression for the mass of the fluid that has been displaced. This is multiplied by G. Over on the other side, we would have the density of the iceberg multiplied by the entire volume of the iceberg. And then again, this is multiplied by G. Now, some of you may have noticed that we can actually divide both sides of this equation by G, which is going to cancel it out on both sides. And that leaves us with this equation here. Now, at this point, we may wish to kind of pause go back and figure out what it is we're actually looking for here. We were asked to find the fraction of the volume of the iceberg that would be visible. And basically what that means is we have to take the volume of the visible portion and divide that by the volume of the entire iceberg. So we're trying to solve for this ratio V sub V over V sub I. That's our goal right now. Now, let's recall this equation right here. What we will do next is solve this for the V sub S. This will become obvious in just a moment why we're doing that. So we would subtract V sub V from both sides, and we would see that the volume of the submerged portion of the iceberg is simply the total iceberg volume minus the volume of the visible portion. So let's keep that idea in mind. And right here, this V sub S, we're gonna replace it with that expression right there, V sub I minus V sub V. Okay, so we've made that strategic substitution. And perhaps next what we can do is divide both sides of this expression by the density of the fluid. 
And what this does is it cancels it out on the left hand side and that kind of frees it up on the left side. We have V sub I minus V sub V and this is equal to the density of the iceberg divided by the density of the fluid and then this is kind of multiplied by the volume of the iceberg. Now we're getting there. We still need to solve for V sub V over V sub I. And in order for us to do that next, perhaps it would be wise to divide each term by V sub I. And this is kind of neat how this works. We're going to divide this by V sub I, divide that term by V sub I, and then we're going to be dividing this term by V sub I. And what's neat about it is that these will cancel out. And now on the left side right here just becomes one. And then this is minus VV over VI. And that's the ratio that we're looking for. And then over here we have the ratio of the densities of the iceberg to the fluid in which it is floating. Now we're in business. So we're just really a couple of steps away. Perhaps we could subtract one from both sides. So if we subtract one from both sides, we're going to be left with the negative ratio. And then this is equal to negative one plus that ratio of the density of the iceberg to the density of the fluid. And then just divide each term by negative one. This essentially flips the signs of each term. So now we have the ratio that we seek. And it's going to be equal to one minus the density of the iceberg divided by the density of the fluid. That's a lot of work, but now the good news is we can just start plugging in the numbers. So for part A, the iceberg was floating in a particular fluid. We're going to go back and figure out what that was. And it was floating in salt water. So the density of salt water is 1024 and the density of the iceberg was 917. So we would have one minus 917 over 1024. Of course, you want to pick up your calculator and punch that in. And if you do so, you should get about 0.10. And that would be the correct answer. You can also express this as 10%. So basically 10% of the entire iceberg would be visible above the surface. And then in part B, they decided to float the iceberg in a different fluid whose density was only 1000. So we'll just kind of change the denominator here to 1000. And when you put that in your calculator, you're going to get about 0.083. And in percentage terms, that's about 8.3%. So a little bit less of the iceberg would be visible above the surface of the water. So here are the correct answers to parts A and B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated.